Fantasy Ed with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. Uh, I'm your host, Richard Seville of FantasySixPack.net, and joining me shortly, Jonathan Chan, FantasySixPack.net, and Kevin Hall, also of FantasySixPack.net. Well, uh, this week... Unlimited. Gotta be unlimited. Uh, yeah, we got a bit of uh, a Russell Wilson coming up <laughs> a bit later on, but um, anyways... Uh, this week we're going to be looking at sleepers. Uh, Fantasy Pros put out a uh, a new ranking um, widget type of thing that all the experts are filling out to uh, rank what, how sleepers are going to uh, pan out, and it's sort of a competition. I don't know what uh, I don't know what the prize is at the end of it, but uh, we'll be talking about that. Um, but uh, <coughs> but first. Uh, let me uh, bring on our guest, uh, our host, uh, my co-host, uh, Jonathan Chan. How are you, Jonathan? Doing Hello. good, Richard. How are you? I'm all right. And Kev, how are you today? Can't complain. All right. Uh, but before we get into sleepers, uh, let's get into a little bit of the news that's happened since uh, um, the earlier part of the day. And the first thing that came up is that there was all oh, Twitter was all worked up about Devonte Adams. He left the field. He was limping off the field. And people were all freaking out because they were afraid that uh, Devontae Adams. But he came back out and uh, everything was fine. But uh, uh, big scare on Twitter. So uh, any of you guys have shares on Devontae Adams? Kev, nope, John? not so far. No, not so uh, far. I've only done one draft so far, which was Scott Fishbowl, and I don't have him there. You have him there? I don't have him there. No. Uh, you don't have him there. Um, maybe you have Miles Sanders. There was a scare about him, too. And it doesn't look too so serious. He has a lower body injury. Uh, he is deemed week to week. But mm, the uh, the uh, insiders don't seem to be too concerned about it. And if they're not concerned about it, neither am I. Uh, how about shares in Miles Sanders? I do have Sanders in Scott Fishbowl. And I'm, I'm, I'm more excited about the fact that Doug Peterson came out and said that he's their guy. Then I am worried about this injury. Do you believe that? What Doug Peterson says? I mean, yeah, coaches have never lied. So, you know, uh, of course I believe. <laughs> what about you, John? Do you like Miles Sanders? Uh, do you like uh, what Doug Peterson says? Do you take it on face value or? I've learned to tune out coach speak, like just all, all of it. Unless it's uh, an injury update, I just tune out coach speak. It's all it's all blustering at this point in training camp. Yeah, I think the only coach – there's one coach that though seems to be uh, quote-unquote honest – and that would be uh, the Vikings coach. He tends to be he tends to be pretty straight with people. Like he gives you the straight though, generally. But you still can't trust coaches. Um, DeAndre Hopkins uh, returned uh, returned to practice from a mild hamstring. Um, a little bit of concern about uh, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, you know, we haven't talked about him a little bit. I'd like to to uh, uh, pick your brains about DeAndre Hopkins. This move to Arizona. Do you think I'll start with you, Kev? Do you think this move to Arizona is, I mean, it's obviously hurt him in the ADP. So is that justified? Um, I, th- I think so, only because he's not like the clear-cut favorite there. I mean, he is, but, you know, Christian Kirk is there. Larry Fitzgerald is there. Um, they always run four wide. So Kyler Murray has a ton of options in that offense. And I think contrary to Bill O'Brien's offense, Cliff Kingsbury's offense isn't the type to really just target one guy. Like as much as he got targeted in Houston. In mean, Houston, he was rocking. He was racking up 150 plus targets every week or every year. Every week would be insane. Every week, every year. <laughs> and I'm not sure he's going to get that kind of volume in Arizona. Well, so you don't think that uh, Nuke will be the like the Larry Fitz because Larry Fitzgerald was the number one guy. Of course, Larry Fitzgerald has had how many different coaches throughout his uh, career with the uh, Cardinals? I don't know, uh, John. What do you think? Yeah, I mean. I'm always wary of uh, skill players going to new teams, but a uh, receiver like Hopkins going to a fast-paced offense like Arizona's, like I, he'll be fine. Uh, like Kevin said, his he won't get 150, you know, 160 targets, but I think the quality of the targets is going to be better. Uh, the offense plays at a faster pace than Houston's does, so inherently they're going to have they're going to run more more plays and more passing plays, and there's just overall more weapons on that team that defenses have to worry about. So 
Maybe Hopkins gets a little bit more space. Who knows? Um, he'll, he'll still be fine. What's he ranked now? Wide receiver three? That's fair enough. Yeah, there's something else to consider is that, did you know Kyler Murray is the smallest quarterback in the league? He's only 5'9". There's no way he's smaller than Breeze. He is. He's smaller than... No, he's smaller than Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is the next one. Smaller than Breeze. How tall is Breeze? Breeze is like, what, six? Come on, you're kidding me. Putting me no, on. Breeze is a five for sure. Yeah, uh, Breeze isn't six feet. There's no way Breeze is six feet. Well, I know Russell Wilson is five. Uh, I think, wait a minute. I think uh, Kyler Murray's 5'10 and Russell Wilson is 5'11. But they're both the smallest. And they play each other twice every year. So I don't know. But Kyler Murray, he's he's, he's a scurry around quarter, quarterback like Russell Wilson was in his earlier career. So, but that'll run out. He'll have to learn how to pass like Russell is learning how. So, and like Cam, how Cam forgot how to pass. So, speaking of Cam Newton, though, John, oh, it's time to talk about the New England Patriots and Belichick's not ruling out a quarterback timeshare. Uh oh. What a ridiculous statement. Quarterback timeshare. Come on now. He's just screwing with the media. Well, it wasn't. I don't think timeshare is actually actually the word that was that was coined. I believe it was uh, a platoon. Oh, I mean, what are they going to have Cam come out for the the third, and then Hoyer takes the first and second, and Stidham comes in to, for closing time? Like it's uh, it, Hoyer ran the, with the first team, and then Stidham did, and then Cam. It was a seniority thing, just getting everybody comfortable. Obviously, once things get started, Cam's going to be the best quarterback, so he'll start. Yeah, but Belichick. Well, this is coach speak, but he's not ruling yeah. out. Bel- no, Belichick is the worst coach to listen to. Like any quote he has, you don't listen to anything he says to the media unless he's uh-huh. mad after a loss. All right. Okay. Now we can get on to. Oh, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the. Uh, is that we're going to have a new segment this year and we're going to have Mr. Unlimited. And I don't know if everybody knows who Russell Wilson. Uh, uh, Russell Wilson is now. He is now Mr. Mr. Unlimited. So Mr. Unlimited. Gotta be unlimited. And uh, so we're gonna have Mr. Unlimited this year, who will be the uh I don't know the the uh the I guess not necessarily the top fantasy star of the week, but the guy that stood out, I guess, in fantasy. Not necessarily the highest fantasy point scorer, but uh but the but a but a standout guy. The standout guy, star of the week will be uh Mr. Unlimited. Gotta be unlimited. And we gotta thank Kevin for that, uh, for that. Also, oh, before we get into that, I just wanted to point out something. Now, I posted, you know, I was perusing around the sports, uh, stuff, uh, today, and I came across something. Now, the Indianapolis 500 is being run for the first time in August, and, uh, there was a, the, uh, they call it the Brickyard, uh, the Indianapolis, uh, uh Motor Speedway, and, the last time they ran the well it was called the uh, it was called some kind of trophy the press delight trophy and a guy won it in 1909 and, and it was kind of like uh, the Indianapolis 250 and it was ran on this day uh, August 19th uh, 1909 and uh, and a guy won it and I put out a tweet for it so I just thought um, anybody who's interested in motorsports history might want to be interested are you, oh are you guys interested in watching the Indy 500 this weekend? Not particularly. No, I will be attending an indoor concert that is being streamed on Twitch. <laughs> okay, no motorsport fans here. Opposite of the Indy 500. I have to admit, I, I'm not. I'm not big on uh, Indianapolis 500. I, if if I'm going to watch anything like motorsports, I probably watch Formula One because. Well, you know, it's a bit more kind of important, but I shouldn't say that because there's a lot of indie fans. But yeah, but I like Indianapolis 500. It's good. Anyways, let's get on with our sleepers. Um, now, as I say, um, Fantasy Pros put out this competition that the experts have to put out, and Kevin and I are involved in it. I guess you're part of the competition too, right, Kevin? If you're if you're in there, you're in there, right? I guess so. I have access to it. Yeah. Uh, do you know what the prize is? I haven't looked checked. What do we get if we do it? If we uh, probably a never ending glory and um, the ability to hold it over Joe's head. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be nice to. Uh... Okay, let's look at our. Uh, let's look at our. Well, anyways, they give us a few slots to pick for our sleepers, so we're gonna look at these some of these sleepers. And Jono, you got a couple of quarterbacks. I'll start with you. Let's talk about your qu- your quarterbacks, whichever one you want to uh, talk about. Yeah, uh, about my both? first QB sleeper is uh, Tyrod Taylor. I know a lot of people aren't uh, aren't a fan of Tyrod, but 
I mean, right now he's the 30th ranked QB on Fantasy Pros, just ahead of whatever, whoever comes out of Chicago and who am I missing here? Who's 32? Anyways. Uh, uh, Nick Foles and... Uh, uh, probably Herbert, but anyways. Um, oh, yeah. As a as a starter, he's got a pretty safe floor with his rushing ability. Uh, as his, you know, uh, two years as a starter, full year as a starter in Buffalo, he ran for over 550 yards both years, uh, 10 total touchdowns in those two years, and then through for an average of around 3,000 yards and 15 touchdowns. I mean, he doesn't have the highest ceiling, but just in terms of his rushing ability, he has a safe floor. And at QB 30 in like two QB leagues or super flex, there are definitely worse options than Tyrod Taylor. Well, you know, and that's the thing too, and this is one of the reasons why people have been sort of um, fading um, Keenan Allen this year in fantasy is because of Tyrod Taylor. But, you know, uh, Tyrod Taylor... Like, the Bills aren't the Bills when he was there. I mean, they're, the weapons on the Bills, they weren't really that great. Okay, he had Robert Woods, but I don't know. There was something wrong with the system, and he just didn't fit their scheme. And so I think I think Tyra Taylor's a good pick for, for a sleeper, really. Kev, what do you think? Yeah, I think he's a good pick. I think he's going to be productive when he's there, especially with the rushing score. My only concern is if you're talking about a season-long sleeper, at some point the Chargers might turn to Herbert. But if they don't, I think for one year, Tyrod is serviceable. Mm. And uh, who's your other one, uh, Jono? Uh, my other QB sleeper is Jared Goff of the Rams. Uh, had a down year last year. Uh, but, I mean, compared to his uh, the incredible 2018 with the historic offense with the Rams. But he finished QB 13 last year. Uh, the old line was awful. The offense regressed uh, like crazy. He threw only 22 touchdowns uh, despite a career-high passing attempts of 626. Uh, it was crazy. But uh, with, I guess, some more uh, O-line, I guess, cohesion and more some more time to gel, I know they had a lot of turnover last year. Uh, his touchdown percentage should uh, should spike again. He didn't the, t- the touchdown percentage dropped a ton last year. So if it goes back to normal ish, even between the the two his last two seasons, he'll be fine and probably low end QB one. Wow. Uh, you know what? I can't argue that, and I'll tell you why. Is because that game with the Chiefs, uh, that Monday, that famous Monday night game where it went into like a uh, record uh, combined score Monday night a couple of years ago. I mean. Every quarterback can have a bad year, and I think Jared Goff just had a bad year. I think a lot of it had to do is that they um, they tried to make uh, Coop they tried to put Cooper Cup in the Robert Woods role, and it just didn't work. And they only found out later in the year, oh, we should have Robert Woods should be you know. So you know they messed. uh, um, Seems like they messed with the system. And uh, well, the last uh, from weeks thirteen to seventeen, they start playing a lot more. 12 personnel with Tyler Higby as the the main guy there and he averaged just under 22 fantasy points a game he was QB6 from between weeks 13 and 17 so and if they keep running the same offense they may figure something out there to, to help them out mm-hmm. any thoughts on Goff before you move on to your uh, choices there Kev yeah Goff is someone I'm a high on this year if only because I'm not really betting on Goff I'm kind of betting on Sean, v- Sean McVay like I just think he's he's good enough that he's gonna you know with the year to kind of sit back and scheme again like he's gonna have a bounce back year and I believe Goff will like he'll see what went wrong last year and he'll fix that because I, I believe Sean McVay is kind of like the Kyle Shanahan where it's just like he's gonna make everyone so much better on that offense mm. okay Kev uh bring up uh batter up um, so my first sleeper is Joe Burrow um not a fan of rookie quarterbacks typically but Burrow falls into just a great place for a fantasy quarterback um he joins well, I mean, first, you can talk about what he did in college. Like, the talent is obviously there. He had the greatest passing season in NCAA history. Like, it's not debatable. 60 touchdowns, the highest yards per attempt, the highest completion percentage, won a national championship undefeated. Like, you can't debate it. Best passing season ever. So he falls into a Bengals team that has a lot of offensive weapons. A.J. Green, who knows what his health is, but, you know, he's kind of... Uh, he's either, If he's there, he's almost a bonus. Because they still got Tyler Boyd, Don Ross, um, Bill Mixon, Giovanni Bernard can both catch the ball out of the backfield. And on top of that, uh, the defense stinks. The defense is horrible. So Joe Burrow is going to have to throw a lot to be in these games. I think for fantasy, um, he's going to be pretty solid. I don't expect them to really ask him to do too much. So he'll do a lot of easy throws. Let a lot of his guys run after the catch. And on top of that, Joe Burrow is like underrated as a runner. Uh, in his last two college seasons, he averaged about 400 yards on the ground and 12 total touchdowns. So uh, he's going to get you a little bit there. Yeah, I was going to ask you about uh, how he is uh, because we're kind of in a you know we're we're in this uh, 
type of league now in the NFL where, uh, you know, where the pistol is sort of the, you know, is, is kind of a main weapon. And, uh, so, you know, when you start, when you start this, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the run scheme, right? So it's, it's the so this run pass option thing it, that's kind of good that uh, Burrow uh, Burrow can get uh, yardage on the ground because that's kind of what you want. Uh, John, do you have anything else to add about Joe, Joe Burrow? No, just just what Kevin said. Uh, the weapons around Burrow are good, and most importantly, he's gonna have to throw a ton because, like you said, the defense is not good. And uh, so, uh, other one, Kev. Uh, yeah, my other one is. Uh... Garner Minshew, um, kind of similar reasoning to Burrow. Obviously, he's not doesn't come with the same pedigree, but uh, he had a really good rookie season. If you look at the numbers, just the if you just look at the straight numbers, he had a season that was comparable to Kyler Murray. And no one's really talking about him in that same vein. I think Kyler Murray is projected to be quarterback four or five right now, and Minshew is quarterback like twenty three. Um, other than that, I mean, Minshew had a great season for a sixth round pick. Uh, started 12 games, threw for 3,300 yards, which if you extrapolate out to a 16 game season, is about 4,100 yards. Um, only threw six picks, which is something you like to look at. But it, where I'm, what I meant by it, it's kind of the same thing as Burrow, this Jacksonville defense is going to be awful. Um, they are not the same Jacksonville team that went to the AFC Championship game. Uh, they've traded all their good defensive players. They've kind of completely destroyed everything there. So, they're going to be behind in a lot of games as well, and Minshew is going to have to throw the ball a ton. Uh, oh. On top of that, they brought in Jay Gruden, and Jay Gruden, for as much as you might hate him as a coach, you might think he's a bad coach, um, he's a good offensive coordinator. Uh, he, he got a lot of top 12 seasons out of Kirk Cousins uh, and uh, Alex Smith that one year, so I think him and Minshew are going to kind of work something out. He's got enough weapons, and uh, I think he'll be pretty good. Um, that reminds me, too, about the Jaguars, is that you responded to... Uh... I can't say the guy's last name, Yannick Nagakwe. <laughs> How do you say his name? Yannick Nagakwe. Nagakwe. Yannick Yannick Nagakwe. Uh, now you responded to uh, a, a tweet. You 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 spotted you spotted a phony. Uh yeah, I got caught by a fake fake retweet. Uh, Adam Schefter underscore zero. You got me. Although uh, I will shift the blame onto the verified Ravens reporter who retweeted it. But, um, yeah, I jumped out of my seat when I saw Yannick Ogakwe traded to the Ravens for <laughs> better than Gus Edwards. Yeah, for nothing, basically. <laughs> yeah, I immediately went to the, the, the Super Bowl ring fitting page and just thought about how much I want to spend on a replica. What are the chances of the, the, that the Seahawks, as usual, swoop in and scoop them? I don't think you can do that after they just traded for Jamal Adams. Yeah, well, maybe not. Uh, John, have you got anything to add to about Gardner Minshew and his uh, – cast uh i mean the same thing applies it just uh he is gonna have to throw a lot but he did struggle closer toward the end of the year uh, as teams kind of figured out his shtick so i'm not really sure what he's gonna do in his second year whether or not teams have adjusted to him but the volume is there and that's really all you need to follow when you're uh when you're when you're looking at fantasy so it's it's a good it's a good it's a good sleeper pick yeah it's a it is a good sleeper pick and it did take defenses a while to figure him out but once they did they were they were on top of the deal but i think uh gardner Minshew and he's definitely got a uh a connection with uh with chark so and chark i think uh, chark is in in a way i think chark is a little bit I think Chark is a little bit underrated. I think uh, under uh, not underrated, but a little bit underranked. So, uh, but Gardner Minshew, there's definitely a connection with that more than any other player. Like Dee Westbrook, they're all gone now. Um, you know, Keelan Cole. Wait, the 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 main guy is is Chark now. My two guys, uh, Sam Darnold, getting good uh, getting good reviews in camp and has a good rapport with Jeff Smith. And Jeff Smith is actually another guy uh, that you might want to uh, consider in uh, drafting. But Sam Darnold, as far as the quarterback goes, um, he's looking good this year in camp. And uh, Kevin, as you remember, uh, last year wasn't so good for him. I mean, he suffered through. Well, I know this is kind of a this is very old. This is kind of old news disease, but he had mononucleosis last year, and he missed a lot of games. Don't know how, he, but he seems to have uh, rehabilit- rehabilitated and been and fine. It's very debilitating uh, disease, but uh, well, we didn't shut down seasons because of, because of mononucleosis. But but he he was off the field because he could have spread it. So, but I uh, think Sam Darnold is uh, a guy that's uh, definitely worth uh, looking, and you can get him. You can get him dirt cheap at definite value here. Uh, oh, John, you want to take that? 
Yeah, uh, Darnold showed some flashes last year. Uh, <laughs> the only thing I would worry about him is that he's playing with two new receivers uh, like on the perimeter and with no offseason to kind of work his way in. He's what has a month or three weeks with Rashad Perryman to kind of prepare that timing. And as always, you have to worry about Adam Gase. <laughs> he hasn't proven yet to, you know, outside of you know Peyton Manning to, ha- to actually create any offense for his teams. So uh, it's tough to trust that offense as a whole. Uh, but Darnold did show a little bit toward the end of last year that if you're expecting uh, typical player growth, then he'd be a good uh, late round late round sleeper. What's your What's your take on uh, Sam Darnold, Kev? Just uh, a lot of a lot of too much sprinkling of hype or something. No, I think I think the hype is is I mean, as a prospect, Sam Darnold came out. He's a pretty good prospect, and I think the Jets playmakers are probably better than people think about off the top of their head, but. Uh, it's just the Adam Gase fact. I can't get past Adam Gase. I can't trust him with anything. I don't want any of the Jets. I, I just don't, I don't trust Adam Gase. I'm sorry. No, I, I tend to agree. Like, uh, Le'Veon Bell has been there and he's, and all that Le'Veon Bell is, is, is just there. He had, uh, what, just a handful of, I don't know, maybe, I can only think about three or four games where Le'Veon Bell had, you know, I mean, I only think he had a, like a Pittsburgh style game. But he claims to uh, that he's going to have a better year this year. But uh, but Le'Veon Bell is someone I'm staying away. However, I'm not staying away from that Sam Donald late in the draft. Uh, the other guy is Teddy Bridgewater. I I have to admit I have a bit of a soft spot for Teddy Bridgewater because he's came back from uh, you know two whole seasons of of not doing anything, and then and uh, the Saints wanted to keep him, but they couldn't. They couldn't keep they couldn't keep Taysom Hill and. Teddy Bridgewater. There's no way that uh, Teddy Bridgewater was going to be. Um, uh, Teddy Bridgewater was set for the open market. There was no way that the Saints could keep him. I think. Uh, the, I think the Panthers have got their quarterback, and uh, I think Teddy Bridgewater could, uh, especially you know, sh- short passes to uh, uh, CMC. Uh, he's got good. He's got good receiver. He's got DJ Moore. He's got a lot of good uh, solid receivers. Curtis Samuel's there. So I and uh, Teddy Bridgewater is. Uh, he's not a long ball thrower. He's he's tends to he tends to throw sort of like keep everything uh, close and tight. So um, and that that kind of works for a, for a player like uh, you know Christian McCaffrey and uh, and Curtis Samuel. And he can throw the occasional bomb to uh, DJ Moore, but but everything is going to be medium, short to medium. I don't think you're going to see a lot of bombs from Ridge Rider, but I think he's I think he's solid enough for uh, for a streamer quarterback and. Uh, <laughs> Um, I definitely stream Teddy Bridgewater. I don't know whether I'd have him as a as a number one. He's he is my he is my lesser of the two. I'm more high on Darnold, but uh, I think Teddy Bridgewater is uh, a very streamable commodity. Uh, Kev, I'll start with you. Yeah, Bridgewater is someone I was looking at. If if only in the same vein as uh, Minshew, like that defense again is going to be horrible, and the weapons are there. So I like Teddy. Um, the question is always with Teddy: Is he going to stay healthy? But um, I think he'll be good with the, the weapons he has, and Matt Rule is supposed to be running a high tempo offense. Uh, the recipe is there. And Jono, you can close off the QBs, and then uh, we'll move mm-hmm. on to our uh, running backs. Yeah, I mean, I like Bridgewater. Uh, being able to dump it off to uh, Chris McCaffrey, and you know, uh, having DJ Moore out there, it's never gonna never gonna hurt a QB, especially for complete percentage and getting those cheap yards after catch. Uh, uh, the yards after catch. So uh, again, good good pick, good solid. Uh, a decent floor pick. Yeah, a floor pick. Yeah, but not uh, not a guy that you can really count on week to week. I think there's definitely going to have to. He's going to be in the start sit columns. Put it that way. But we'll see how it goes. It might turn out best. Kev, uh, you got a you got a list of. Uh, we'll only take two out of each of our lists, and uh, so pick two of. Uh, first of all, name all the players on your on your sleeper list of running backs, and pick two to talk about. Um, sure. So I will, let's see, who do I have in common with you guys? So my list is Justin Jackson of the Chargers, Chase Edmonds of the Cardinals, Jarek McKinnon of the Niners, and A.J. Dillon of the Packers. Uh, let's go with Chase Edmonds first. Um, Edmonds is just talented. He's super talented in the game last year where he filled in for Kenyon Drake. Uh, he had 121 yards and a touchdown. And he is going to be the uh, running back two in Arizona. 
Uh, like Jonathan said earlier, it's a fast-paced offense. I think he can have standalone value as well as being a handcuff for Kenny and Drake in case something goes wrong with him. Um, he's a kind of guy who can you know, break long plays, he can catch the ball. Edmonds can kind of do everything. And um, he's someone who's talented enough. I think uh, the team, someone on the team just came out and said that he's a he's got enough skills to be a number one running back. So I'm high on Edmonds. I think he has standalone value. And then as a handcuff, is also valuable. I think those are kind of the backups you want to target. Um, yeah. Yeah, Speaking of... Any thoughts about Edmonds? Uh, well, I I do have a thought about this, but it's kind of like on the periphery uh, where, where you kind of mentioned like he has handcuff value, and in this season, uh, are handcuffs more important? And is it, is it kind of important to get a guy like Chase Edmonds if you have Kenyon? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't. I don't know if, like, I'm kind of going into the season just, like, almost not considering COVID. Like, I, what, how, how can I consider it if I don't really know what's going to happen? So, yeah. I think it's more important. I think it's important just because Kenyon Drake, while he was fantastic last year, isn't even a proven running back. Um, he, he only did it for, I think, 12 games and or less than that, 11 games. And while he was dynamic and while he was fantastic, he is a free agent. A potential free agent. The Cardinals haven't assigned him or anything like that. They haven't committed to him. And there's a chance that he he could have been a flash in the pan. So uh, Edmonds is someone who you're kind of getting a lot of potential upside and a decent floor as, you know, the number two in a pretty good offense. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Jono, uh, any thoughts about uh, Chase Edmonds? I'll tell you what, Jono, why don't you pick the second guy uh, from Kevin's list? Uh, you can pick the second guy. That's how we'll do it. The guy who the guy who has the list picks one, and then somebody else picks uh, somebody from the other guy's list. So... And get Kevin uh, to talk about. Yeah, I mean, I could talk about Justin Jackson uh, since me and Kevin both have him on the list. Sure. Um, yeah, Jackson, uh, I mean, everybody's all over Eckler uh, to start the year. Uh, he was great last year. Uh, super dynamic, even when Melvin Gordon came back to the lineup. But he himself has already admitted that he's not an every down back. He's not going to be, you know, taking 15, 20 handoffs a game. Uh, so somebody has to be the goal line back. And I don't see why it shouldn't be Jackson. He's averaged over five, yard, five yards a carry in his career, and he's done decently when Melvin Gordon's been injured in the past. Uh, I know Joshua Kelly's there, and people are taking him as a, as a late-round flyer, but I think uh, as the more experienced back uh, with the system and having the short training camp, I think it gives Jackson an edge. Um, and to start the year, I think is, he's going to have a good opportunity to be that goal line back. Kev, a little bit of, uh, is there a bit overhype on Joshua Kelly? And that's why you've got to have Justin Jackson. Yeah, uh, I had Justin Jackson on my list too. And, and it has nothing to do with Joshua Kelly. I don't really particularly think about him. Um, not on, And on top of that, a report came out that Joshua Kelly was, uh, hit, I think the offensive coordinator said his head spinning right now. So uh, that's not a good sign. Um, but yeah, Justin Jackson, I mean, the Chargers have proven that they can support two running backs. I mean, it's Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler. Uh, it's been like that for years, and uh, I don't know if he's going to be Melvin, like put up what Melvin Gordon did. But there again, it's so you're just looking for a chance, and I think if he he has a chance, and and Austin Eckler again can't handle the load, like Jonathan said, then Justin Jackson steps in into a in into a pretty valuable role. Okay, Jono, I'll, I'll pick an I'll pick one one guy from your list from from the remainder here. You've got Alex Madison, Damian Harris, Naheem Hines. Yeah, let's see. Well, you're a you're a New England Patriots guy. Let's um, let's talk about Damian Harris. And you've got Pending Miller. <laughs> Kevin's already upset. <laughs> you don't. Want to hear. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, you don't have to comment. I don't know. You can grill him on it. I'll I'll, t- I'll take Damian Harris anyway. And you've got Pending Miller there. Miller's apparently yeah, healthy. If if Miller makes the team, I don't think you can really take Damian Harris as a as a true sleeper because he won't get the touches. But if Miller doesn't make the team and we know that Sony Michelle is not going to start the season, somebody has to be the the early down back. Yeah, but I, you never know who's going to be the early down back, do you though? I mean, sometimes it, sometimes they have Burkhead in there. Yeah, Burkhead's too injury prone to to be consistent early down back. They'll I think Harris will slide right into Sony Sony Michelle's role. Uh, not the Brandon Bolden role. <laughs> nah, they didn't spend a third round pick on him to to play special teams. No. <laughs> No, it's not. Uh, Kev, you don't want to comment on Damian. Well, you can pick a different one then. If you want to pick. Uh, but uh, I'll say this. I, I, I'm sorry, John. I don't like Damian Harris as a sleeper pick. I, it's it's really, it's kind of a hit and hope. Really, really hit and hope. 
because Miller Miller is just too much of a of a problem for him. And I know you have pending Miller there as a as a caveat, but I I still I still would have one of the re- one of the other two guys that you mentioned here, Alex Madison, and even Alex Madison, you know, he's kind of a handcuff. He's, he doesn't have standalone value. And Hines, well, but I think it's yeah, well, to, be, to be honest, the only reason I I kind of groaned is because I feel like we talk about the Patriots for a team that's irrelevant <laughs> and isn't going to make the playoffs this year. We do seem to talk about them a lot. Excuse you, <laughs> um, but no, I'm 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 actually not like out on Damian Harris. Like Sonny Michelle, his stock just keeps dropping further and further. It Damian does. Harris was an elite prospect at Alabama. He started in front of Josh Jacobs. Like that's that's not something that you can kind of you know. He was a third round pick. He has the pedigree. Um, he, he has a potential role that he can win. Like Rex Burkhead is nice, and he's like, but he's more of a complimentary player. He'll never be a, a main guy. So um, if Sonny is really hurt, that that's the thing with Damon Harris though is it's like it's a little too early for me to call him a sleeper, if only because it so much depends on what goes on around him, like what's going on in Sonny's knee, what's going on with Lamar Miller. It's hard to make a decision, but I do think Damian Harris is decent. He's a decent runner, but I just haven't heard anything out of camp. Uh, I don't know if you have, John. So, um, I haven't caught anything that about Damian Harris in camp, so I don't no, know. He, they said, um, I mean, they just said, like, he's impressing, but who really knows? They said Bill Belichick hinted at a larger role from him, but it's all, who knows with all this stuff. Right. Okay, let's get to my guys. Okay, I get to pick one and then... Uh, Kevin, you can you can pick my second one. Uh, my list has Antonio Gibson, Boston Scott, Carlos Hyde, and AJ Dillon, which you also have, Kevin. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the big hype train, Antonio Gibson. Now I have Antonio Gibson. I'm falling into a little bit of the hype here. And now I know last week I compared him. I compared this hype to the to the old Tavon Austin days, and I still think that holds true. But but we're talking Ron Rivera here. And the word out of camp is that they're grooming him to be uh, to be a, a major part of the uh, offense of the Washington football team. And I think a lot of people are. I don't think you can really. I don't really think you can settle on Adrian Peterson. I I just cannot. Late in the draft, I would rather take Antonio Gibson than I would and Adrian Peterson because there there is upside, but at the back of my mind, I keep hearing that word Tavon Austin. You're drafting Tavon, <laughs> but on the other hand, uh, I've watched the tape on the guy. Um, he's definitely a playmaker. There's no question about that. But Tavon Austin looked good in his. There's good tape on uh, Tavon Austin too. But these WRRB types, they just they kind of drive you nuts in fantasy. And I almost feel that Antonio Gibson could be one of those players who is better in real football than he is for fantasy. But I still have him as a sleeper because I just can't take the chance that, that uh, he, he could turn out to be something. Because um, with Darius Geis removed, the, the, the opportunity is there. So I kind of have to, uh, you kind of have to look at that. I know there's Bryce Love to look at as well, but uh, he's a bit down the list, and everyone seems to be high on Antonio Gibson. Uh, Jono, uh, thoughts on Antonio Gibson and the hype surrounding him? Yeah, I mean, right now his ADP is still in the manageable range. Uh, I know it differs based on you know your league's risk tolerance, but I think as more of the training camp tape comes out, you know he, he he'll everybody breaks big plays in training camp, but especially for a rookie running back breaking big plays, it's it, it, it the hype is going to drive his his uh, ADP up way too high uh, for my blood. Uh, especially for somebody that again gets to work with the team for a month before being thrown into an NFL season, not a good recipe for success. If you're, especially if you're drafting like your RB three or something like that. Mm-hmm. Kev, any thoughts on Antonio Gibson? And then pick one more of my four. Yeah, I mean the the main point that I agree with is I, I don't think that the Redskins are going to lean on AP all year. Um, it just it's a young team. They need to find out who's going to grow with Haskins. Adrian Peterson is not part of the future. I can't imagine that they're just going to hand them the ball to. 50 times because they're not going to compete this year so they need to figure out what young talent they have whether it's Bryce Love or Antonio Gibson or some random dude they find off the scrap is I don't think it's the AP um as far as your list uh I didn't talk about AJ Dillon so why don't you uh, yeah AJ Dillon now here's the thing is that is that everyone everyone's expecting a large regression for uh Aaron Jones and I really don't think Jamal Williams is on the scrap heap yet 
but uh, the Packers drafted A.J. Dillon rather high for, uh, and, and especially when they were in need of wide receivers. Well, obviously, they thought they didn't, but I mean, and then they tried to get Devin Funches, and Funches held out, took the opt out, and so, so here, here we have this A.J. Dillon guy, and I can't help but think that that uh, the uh, Matt Lafleur is trying to take the uh, the ball out of uh, Aaron Rodgers' hands, and he's trying to make uh, trying to focus a little bit more on the running game. So A.J. Dillon. I, I would think as a sleeper for late in your draft, I think AJ Dillon is is a guy you kind of have to uh, that you might want to pick up as a. He, I, I think he's a little bit he's a, he's a little bit dart throw and he's a little bit sleeper. But I, I would, but the backfield uh, I haven't given up on Aaron Jones because Aaron Jones is just a beast. But um, there's always a bit of a timeshare going on there, and if anything happens to uh, Aaron Jones, I just don't think um, Jamal Williams will be the guy. I think AJ Dillon, um, they've got him in ready in reserve as uh, as a guy that get, as a guy they want to to get out there. So whether that happens, and and don't forget, there's another guy, Dexter Williams, who never got a shot at all last year, or very little. So I'm going to. Uh, this is a very this is kind of a dart throw sort of sleeper uh, hybrid for me, AJ Dillon, but. Um, he's kind of a guy that if you leave him, if you leave him on the, on the waiver pile, you know, you might regret it. So, um, with, uh, a lot of, uh, commissioners expanding rosters because of COVID, um, it, it might make sense to pick up a guy like AJ Dillon. Uh, Kev, you have AJ Dillon as well. Do you agree? Yeah. I mean, to me, it's, it's just when a, when a reasonably smart franchise like the Packers spends a, a decently high pick on a guy, you kind of have to pay attention. And then it's even easier to pay attention when the guy has Derrick Henry as physical traits, but is a better pass catcher. So that just has me on alert. And, um, it's not that I think Aaron Jones is bad at all, but he is a free agent. He's an upcoming free agent as well. So, uh, Dylan in, De- in Dynasty, I think Dylan actually is very valuable. But this year, I think he could carve out a role. Like, I think Aaron Jones had like, how many touchdowns did he have last year? I want to say he had like 18 touchdowns. Like, that's going to regress. And I think if, you know, Dylan can kind of become a, a 1B to Jones is 1A and he's going to be a better goal line back, then, you know, he's going to have value. Yeah. Why do we talk about touchdown regressions when it comes to Aaron Jones, but we don't talk about touchdown regressions when it comes to Christian McCaffrey? Will somebody explain it to me? Jono, maybe you can. Because Christian McCaffrey, I guess, Jones has been kind of on and off with his usage through his entire career in Green Bay, which is why he was never taken as a top running back before last year. Even last year, he was only getting like 50% or just above 50% snap shares. Um, and with that kind of playing time and volume, I don't think he's going to hit 18 targets. But with McCaffrey, you know he's playing every snap possible unless he's hurt and he's going to get consistently 20 25 touches a game so it's more likely that those touchdowns will will remain high fair point uh any thoughts on aj dillon or shall we leave it at that i think we're good on aj dillon yeah uh so uh take your uh let's move on to the wide receivers john and you can uh, take your first and then i will select your second guy so give us your list and uh and take your pick <laughs> okay <laughs> I, huh no, I just noticed okay. that there's another Patriots player on there. <laughs> I, I won't talk about and kill Harry. I'll talk about Anthony Miller instead. Okay. Uh, this is like the third consecutive year I've talked about Anthony Miller, but it's going to happen. That mystical third-year receiver breakout, th- th- this could be the year, probably, maybe. Uh, better chance of it happening if Nick Foles uh, wins the QB job and not Mitch Trubisky, but we'll see. Uh, last year, Miller started slow again. He was working back from a shoulder injury uh, that he suffered in 2018. Uh, but as he got healthier and built a little bit more rapport with QB, he ended the season pretty well. Uh, the last two games are a bit of an anomaly. I'm not sure, I can't remember if he was hurt or not, but he only got like combined targets in weeks 16 and 17. But between weeks 11 and 15, he played very, very well. Uh, I believe he finished as a wide receiver two uh, across that span, like within the top 24 at least. And he was getting plenty, plenty of targets. So I think it. With a little bit, again, a healthier season and more with a more consistent QB and Nick Foles, uh, he can finish uh, as a wide receiver three over a full season. 
Wide receiver oh, he finished, three. Excuse me. He finished as wide, wide receiver eight overall between weeks 11 and 15. So he played very, very well when he mm. was healthy and getting targets. Right, right. Um, yeah, there was a big regression uh, with Anthony Miller. I think a lot of people uh, drafted him last year expecting some 2018-style numbers, but they just didn't happen. They kept going to uh, the other guy. Uh, um, what's his name? The, oh, I just, oh, man, the name escapes me. He's He's gone. Uh, he's gone off the boil. Uh, come on, you guys. The not Allen Robinson, but the other guy. What's his name? He was. He was with the Falcons. He started with the Falcons. Oh, um, Taylor Gabriel. Yeah, Taylor Gabriel. Taylor Gabriel. Oh, Taylor, Taylor Gabriel. That's the guy. Actually, he started with the Browns, and then he went to the. Oh, well, he's the gone Falcons. now. He's gone now. Um, yeah. So he's I think. Gone. Yeah, with it, with him out of the way, I think Anthony Miller could. I wouldn't say exactly resume. 2018 numbers. It's a good sleeper, definitely. Uh, Kev, what do you think? Yeah, Anthony Miller is is one of my favorite sleepers. Um, I think that Bears offense is going to be pretty improved, whether it's Foles or uh, Mitchell Trubisky, who has a new fire in his eye. Um, <laughs> I think it'll be. Yeah, I think it'll be improved, and I think there's got to be a wide receiver too, because Allen Robinson can't do it all, mm-hmm. and Jimmy Graham sucks. All right. Well, I picked the running back uh, from 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 John's list, so you pick the uh, Kev. You pick. Uh, uh, from his list. Uh, sure. Uh, I am interested in your take on Steven Sims because that's a name I've heard, but rarely as this, you know, as a sleeper like this. Yeah. Um, Washington needs a wide receiver too. Uh, Terry McLaurin can't do everything. And at the, that's the, the, he can. no, he can't do everything. If Alan okay. Robinson can't do everything, then scary Terry can't either. Uh, I'm, I do like McLaurin. I think he's a he's a talented receiver, but toward the end of last season, uh, he struggled with Haskins a lot, uh, which is confusing considering that was uh, confusing. That was incredibly confusing considering you know he was his college QB and all that kind of stuff. You'd think they'd have a little bit more rapport, but uh, I think as more people start to see uh, McLaurin, they'll have to Haskins is going to have to start going to secondary targets, and you know no more Jordan Reed. Uh, getting injured after three games, but Sims played well the last uh, three, four games of the season. He didn't have any fewer than seven targets between weeks 14 and 17, and he caught four touchdowns over the last three games. I think with more targets, he's a good slot guy, a good uh, number two to McLaurin. I think, again, Washington, they're not going to be a great team. They're going to have to throw a lot, and I think Sims is going to be the number two target there. I I have one question about this, and I don't know if you have this on hand, Kev. Uh, m- well, maybe I do, actually. I'm just going to try and look for, um, to see... Uh, I need to know what um, the vital statistics are on Stevenson. I don't know if he's a big. I can't remember if he's a big receiver, or a small receiver. Five ten. He's a slot guy. He's a slot guy. All right. Five ten. All right. All right. Yeah, that that kind of fits. That kind of fits uh, Haskins' role. Where is he? Uh, where is he ranked here? Very low. Uh, yeah, he's very low. Where, where have I got him? I have him at W R. He's got to be in here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for I'm looking for him on the list. Obviously, I'm looking. No, he wouldn't be way up there. He'd be down here. I don't even know if he's on my list. I don't well, think his may... ESPN ADP is 1,000. So <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I was looking, trying to see if I've got him ranked. I don't even have uh, I don't even have him ranked. But he's a little guy, huh? Slot guy. Although yeah, I, there he is, Steven Sims. I found him. I have him as WR 70, 76. <laughs> WR76, uh, stats, notes, uh, overview. Um, it doesn't have his, oh, I have to go for full plot. I want to just, I want to just, uh, his height and weight he is, uh, just for you folks out there, you got to have this information. It's kind of important. He's 5'10", 176. Oh, he's a little guy. Speed guy. Uh, well, I don't know, Kev. What do you think? Uh, you think Steven Sims is a good sleeper? Yeah, I mean, the, the thing with the Redskins offense is that just so much is up in the air that you can almost just throw a dart, pick a name out of the hat or whatever, and maybe you might. I mean, that's what, kind of what happened with Terry McLaurin. Like, no one thought he was going to be any good last year. At least I don't remember anyone talking about him as a fantasy prospect. No. And uh, he just kind of exploded on the scene. So I think with everything as up in the air as it is, there's so many roles to be taken in Washington that, uh, I mean, why not Steven Sims? Like, he's a guy who at least had a year and under his belt. Caught four touchdowns last year, 300 yards. Like, not, nothing great, but at least he's there. So, you know, yeah. why not? Yeah, he kind of snuck up on us. I will uh, do my guy. Uh, I am going to take Kendrick Bourne. And, Jono, you can 
you can pick my second guy. Uh, I'm going to take Kendrick Bourne. Bourne, uh, Bourne is getting it's slowly dawning on people that without Jalen Hurd and Debo Samuel probably not going to start the season. And while well, Dante Pettis is coming along, but you know he seems to be in the perpetual doghouse. I don't even know why he's still in the 49ers, but it seems like the last man standing is pretty much Kendrick Bourne. And Bourne is a uh, um, he's a red zone target for Garoppolo, and I I think uh, anybody who played best ball last year probably did pretty good with Kendrick Bourne. And now I know I know granted. Kendrick Bourne as a as best ball doesn't translate the same into fantasy, but into uh, redraft fantasy. But um, unlike Kendrick Bourne, I think Kendrick Bourne is a guy you got to pick up with uh, Jalen Hurd out now and uh, and Debo Samuel and and Garoppolo likes him now. Kendrick Bourne, granted, he's 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 not he's not reached 500 yards. I don't think in his career. I mean, I think this is his fourth season, but. I think it, this could be a, an opportune time for a guy like Kendrick Bourne to. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna, stick, I'm gonna make a bold prediction. I think Kendrick Bourne gets 800 yards this this season. So um, only because that Jalen Hurd isn't in there and Dante Pennis isn't trusted by the coaching staff and and Debo Samuel is uh, is injured. So I think uh, I think Kendrick Bourne has a has a wide open door for opportunity here. To uh, so I'm gonna predict he's gonna get 800 yards and five touchdowns. Kev, the the five touchdowns I might be with you on the 800 yards. Uh, I'll stay away from that one. But Bourne is, I mean, it's a similar reason why I've got Brandon Ayuk on my list. Like that wide receiver core lost Emmanuel Sanders. They have got some injuries. They oh yeah, Brandon, I, I I I was remiss in, in in not mentioning him, but he's a rookie and rookies, you know. So we've all right. taken a different Niners receiver. Then that's that's what we're right, doing. Right. So, I mean, it's it's all like there's – I mean, I think that passing game is going to be pretty good. I think Garoppolo is better than most people think. And uh, in year three under Kyle Shanahan, I think now, like he'll, he'll probably open up a little bit more. So, I mean, there's someone who's going to emerge. But, and the reasoning is there and the opportunity is there. So, let's just see who it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, Copy and paste that for, for Trent Taylor, just exactly like Kevin said, but Trent Taylor instead of Brennan Ayuk. Uh, right. Yes. Yes. Well, we each have we each have the big three. Uh, John, oh, you have to. Uh, who was going to pick? I think John, you were going to pick my second guy. Yeah. Why don't you go with uh, with Pittman? Oh, Michael Pittman. Yeah. Well, actually, him and Paris Campbell. I I actually prefer Paris Campbell, but I put Pittman in there because well, the problem the problem with the Colts and and their passing game is well Philip Rivers I don't really trust Philip Rivers to to be able to get the ball he's to I don't I'm not sure if this is going to sure Philip Rivers had a down year last year his his passing was just awful it was the worst year for Philip Rivers in fantasy that I have seen and it looked like he was uh, getting washed up but I think when you talk about Michael Pittman uh you're kind of talking about uh Paris Campbell and the same but I would prefer Paris Campbell, but I put Michael Pittman in there as well as as a flyer, and I know I know that's I know that's a little insane. I should pick one or the other, and I, I these uh, these rankings you have sort of like a, uh, you can play around with them. But I I was I was kind of struggling for a fourth guy that I was, and I'd heard some pretty good things about Michael Pittman in camp that he's that he's doing pretty good. But I really feel that as Paris Campbell is the one that's probably going to take it away. In fact, I would even go as far to suggest that um, T.Y. Hilton is in decline a bit, and I'm staying away from T.Y. Uh, I'm staying away from T.Y. Hilton. I'm not buying any shares of T.Y. Hilton. I would rather take a flyer on either Paris Campbell or Michael Pittman. Again, I would prefer Paris Campbell. Kev. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of on the same page. It's I think Paris Campbell is the better one, but Pittman is interesting just because of his athletic profile and his draft status. But um, I mean, I think I don't think Rivers is quite done yet, and I think he can still support two receivers. T.Y. Hilton is going to be one, so it's just a question of who's the other. Paris Campbell is in that you know in that second year where you know sometimes wide receivers break out. Uh, he's been killing it at camp apparently, so uh, he's someone I'm pretty high on. Yeah, I definitely uh, have Paris Campbell on my target list. Uh, John, do you? Uh, yeah. I mean, with Rivers there, he's going to be throwing a ton. 
Um, I think, well, maybe not with, you know, Jonathan the Hulk Taylor in the background, but who, uh, the backfield, but who knows? Uh, either one, it's tough to pick between the two of them um, until we actually see them in game. But I will say, I don't dislike T.Y. Hilton as much as you do. Uh, I think a lot of his struggles were like injuries and Jacoby Brissett just not being able to throw to throw deep and kind of make plays. I think with Rivers, uh, he'll have a bit of a bounce back year, health provided, uh, provided whatever happened with his hamstring earlier this year heals before the season starts. But if he plays the games, I think he'll have a, a good bounce back year with Rivers. Yeah, I just feel like with T.Y. Hilton, the tires are starting to show that they're getting a little bit worn early. But I don't know, he could turn it around. And same with uh, Philip Rivers, uh, quite capable of turning it around. I mean, he's an experienced quarterback. He knows the ropes. So um, we'll have to see. But uh, I'm definitely I'm definitely higher on Campbell than I am Michael Pitt. Michael Pittman's kind of, eh, he's kind of in the dart throw territory. Uh, so, Kev, uh, I guess Paris Campbell was kind of stroked off the list. So you get to pick one, and then I'll pick your second. Um, sure. We can go with Randall Cobb, who is someone who's kind of been forgotten. Uh, people seem to forget that he had like 800 yards with the Cowboys last year. Um, he's stepping into a Texans offense that just traded DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins is obviously not DeAndre Hopkins, but DeAndre Hopkins does have a void of 150 targets, 1,100 yards, and seven touchdowns that needs to be filled by someone because it doesn't seem like anyone's projecting that Deshaun Watson is going to take a step back. So uh, while I think Will Fuller is going to have a breakout season, um, I think Randall Cobb can kind of step in and fill in some of that too, uh, kind of like a technician uh, running inside routes that I don't think Hop- uh, Watson has ever really had. So uh, Cobb is just someone who I think is going to have a really safe floor. Uh, I don't think he's going to be like, you know, wide receiver two potential or anything like that. He doesn't have a high ceiling. But if you're talking about sleepers who are going to outperform their draft position, uh, Cobb is someone I'm looking at. Uh, 700 yards? 800 yards? Uh, I can see him, you know, 700 yards, seven touchdowns, something like that. Hmm. Jono? Yeah, I mean, when, when Will Fuller gets hurt, Watson's gonna have to throw to somebody. Uh, I don't want to say that because I don't want to put negativity in the world. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think like Cobb showed enough last year that he's not washed yet, and Watson, like like you said, uh, Cobb's a nice safe target for Watson, so he doesn't have to take so many hits, and it could work. Well, in all fairness, uh, Kevin, I have to go with your Ravens guy, Miles Boykin. Um, I was high on Boykin last year, so what makes you what, what makes you a little bit higher on Boykin this year? Um, just, uh, you know, a second year wide receiver who's got physical talent in a, in an offense that's going to be probably going to throw the ball more. Um, I, while the Ravens obviously are good at running the ball, they ran the ball 54% of plays last season, and that's kind of unsustainable. Uh, I think a lot of it was because they got up so early that they just kept running the ball. And I think it's more than likely that that's not going to be the norm. They're going to be in close games, so Lamar's going to have to throw a little bit more. Uh, on top of that, like something, you know, they didn't bring in too much competition for that wide receiver two spot. Uh, they got James Prochet and Devin DuVernay, but those were third, I think fourth and fifth round guys. Uh, Boykin is out of those guys. Boykin is, you know, your prototypical X receiver, big body, has speed, can make plays downfield, which is something that the Ravens offense would really welcome. So he's someone that I could see breaking out in that offense. And again, like when you're looking for sleeper candidates, uh, I think a good way to go about it is just look at anyone who has an opportunity in a good offense. Yeah. Uh, what's your What's your outlook for Hollywood, by the way? Uh, wide receiver one. <laughs> a wide receiver one or the no, no, no. wide receiver one? I'm talking Antonio Brown for the next 12 years, but minus the issue. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's conservative, conservative guess there. All right. We're that's, getting... yeah, that's conservative. I didn't say Jerry Rice. I didn't say Randy Moss. I said Antonio Brown. <laughs> okay. Let's, uh, we've got uh, two tight ends each, but we'll only do one tight one. Pick one of your two. Say who your two tight ends are, Kevin, and uh, tell us uh, who... Uh, which one? Sure. Uh, one I got to talk Eric about. Ebron, uh, who I know I have uh, denigrated many times in the past, and I will probably continue to do so, but uh, he's being drafted as tight end 23, and um, Vance McDonald was just being drafted as tight end 8 last year, and they're pretty much going into the exact same situation, so not really sure why that's such a big discrepancy. Uh, my, the guy who I will focus a little bit more on is Ian Thomas of the Panthers. Um, he's been the backup to Greg Olson for a couple of years now, but he is one of those um, size, speed, 
freaks who, you know, uh, presents mismatches for linebackers and safety down the field. Um, he's, well, let me look up his measurables because I know they're impressive. Mm-hmm. He is 6'4", 260, ran a 4.74. Uh, just a huge dude. Uh, again, we talked about how Teddy and that Panthers offense is going to have to get going. And if you're high on DJ Moore, if you're high on Curtis Samuel, then the reason you should be high on Ian Thomas. Okay. And uh, Jono, your uh, your tight end tight ends, and which one are you gonna? Yeah, uh, my tight end are. Uh, I'm going back to 2013 for this. Uh, Tal Eifert and Jimmy Graham, a couple of veterans. Uh, I'll go more of Eifert just because he probably at this point has a clear path to uh, targets if his back holds up. Uh, the Jags, as we've already talked about, uh, Jacksonville's gonna have a terrible team the defense is going to be bad and they're going to have to throw uh they also just lost josh oliver their other tight end uh for the year due to injury so eifert is the t the the tight end one there he has experience with jay gruden uh dating back to his good year in 2013 with the bengals i just think he along with chark are just easily their best red zone targets and i think he he won't rack up the yards i don't think his body can handle you know a lot of targets and a lot of yards but as a red zone target, sure, I think he can create uh, enough to have some decent weeks, provided he can catch those touchdowns and stay healthy. Yeah, the only thing, yeah, Tyler Eifert, he, uh, just a bit of, he's had a, such a that that one year with with that really bad injury, he had a uh, that really bad injury, kind of like uh, like the the Dennis, uh, who's that? Who's the Dennis? Uh, I forgot his name, Kev. He used to play for Baltimore. Pit Friend of. Pit yeah, Dennis Pitta. He had a Dennis Pitta type of injury, and he came through. But, um, but you're right. You know, with uh, Josh Oliver gone, um, looks like Tyler Eifert's the guy. Well, he's not gone, but I mean, he broke. What did he break his foot or something? No, he's out for the season. It's confirmed. He's out for the season. He's confirmed. No, he's out of the season. Yep. season. Okay, so it is Eifert's uh, Eifert's baby. Okay, uh, I have Jay Sternberger and Irv Smith Jr. I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk about Jay Sternberger. Uh, there's really nobody else on the Packers. I mean, you have Marquise Lewis is still there, but he doesn't do a whole lot. But I think. Uh, I think uh, Aaron Rodgers would like to get Jay Sternberger going. Um, he caught a touchdown pass in the uh, conference finals. He, he, um, I think he only had 60 snaps last year, but you know, it's, um, he's actually Jay Sternberger isn't really a sleeper. He's more like a dart throw, which is my article. I put him in my dart throw list, and uh, that's pretty much uh, all I have to say about him. Uh, but I have him as a as a potential. Thing. Although I will say that Irv Smith Jr., um, definitely a breakout candidate. The only problem is Kyle Rudolph is still there. I don't know. Who knows? Um, just quickly on the defenses, I have the Seattle Seahawks and Kevin has the Chargers. So, guys, final thoughts uh, about the sleepers and uh, and uh, what you're looking for. We've got a uh, – I just wanted to point out that we've got a draft tomorrow. Are you guys both in the uh, – uh, the the fantasy six pack uh, uh, hour uh, where the live draft yeah the oh, yeah. live draft yeah you both bo- we're all in it I'm drafting seventh what do you guys got what do you got I got six oh so you're before me and Kev what do you got I have no I have no clue uh, <laughs> I'm okay. uh, all I know is I'm gonna have the best draft uh, you know are you you know what I'm I'm kind of sick of mocks we just had a mock in our we had a slow mock draft, and it was the most grueling. Uh, I don't know. I just had a hard time paying attention to it. I tried, but I got like I was. I know Kevin, you missed a few. You you missed a couple of picks in it. So obviously, you weren't really feeling the burn. No, I'm on the West Coast, and it's annoying. Uh, I can see. I'm picking fifth, so I'm picking before you both. All right. Oh, we're just gonna be sniping each other like crazy. So we're five, six, and seventh. Oh, isn't that convenient? So you both get to snipe me before I like on the on the odd turn. Wow, that's nice. So who but would you I... guys like to take in the first round? Hmm? What? Who would you like to take in the first round at six and seven? Who would I like to take in the first round at six and seven? Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe McCaffrey falls to six. Who knows? Okay. I'll, 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 I'll definitely sweep on the ball. Yeah, definitely oh. gonna fall there. I don't know. I'll, I'll take uh, I'll, I'll take Hollywood Brown at six. Shit. <laughs> okay everybody uh thanks for joining us on the fantasy edge and that's all we all the time we have and uh next week john you will be hosting the show next week Yay. so uh you'll have to prepare the uh podcast and do uh we'll, we'll go along with whatever topic you got 
Eh, let's call it bus. We'll take the other side of the coin next week. Oh no, I hate doing bus, but... Oh, it's so much fun though. I, I know. Alright, uh, thank you for joining uh, us on the Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Seville of FantasySixPack.net and Kevin for Kevin Huo and Jonathan Chan. We'll see you next week, everybody. Take care.